Okay, let's take a uh, look first to see what kind of adapters we have to mount this hubless or tap hat style rotor for our brake lathe. Of course on a brake lathe we have the arbor sticking out, we'll see that in a minute, but we do have a nut that one side has a very deep countersink in it to allow it to go down a little further over to the threads in the shank of the arbor or the other end has the threads right at the very top of it. So we can use this either way, depending on space or when stacking all of our arbors and hubs and so on up on that. These threads are left-handed, which means you have to turn it the opposite way to run it on. And either side is left-handed because it's one thread to go the whole way through. Next here we do have a, several spacers and these are just a one inch bore and this is nothing more than a spacer again to build up across our arbor shaft itself. Here the one with the piece of leather or rubber around it is a self-aligning uh, spacer on this. We always put this right across against the nut itself then and it does align things very well and sort of even works like a clutch because it is separate as a, of each other. Back here we start looking at dashers and we have a couple of different kinds of them and this is to center the rim as in the nose that's inside of our flange to keep the rotor from going up and down. One, we have these tapered ones and you can see that right now I've got them stacked so that they do run consecutively and constant through each other on sizes. So we have one and with a neck on the back to accept, accept the spring and the spring will set over top of those or on the front of this but with that again you can see that I here is three of them that literally go progressively from big to small we select one of those to fit our hub we can do that right now and if I have my uh, rotor right here if I try the small one it goes the whole way through the hole if I try the next size that's just right just a small amount sticks through the other side and of course I could even use it this direction from the front. There's two different ways you'll look at your application on your board. Of course the big one we won't use anyway because it does not match up. At this point, set those two back and for a hubless setup here then we're going to have a tape. So that's going to be our first tool that we need on this one here. Set them here. Alongside of these tapers, though, you're also going to see these units. There is three of them, and these are if the hub or the rotor actually has a tapered bearing inside of it. In fact, these are ball-like shaped on each side so that it will set inside of a race. You're going to adjust these, find the one that fits in and rides in the center of a race of a bearing itself on it. So you have this in with that you have these progressive sizes on this but again this is only one that if it had a bearing that has the adjustable type with the races and the cones and so on like that it's starting to become non-existent at this we could also use these though because of the square ends on these as spacers just as we build up on our arbor that's completely acceptable on that along with that these radiuses these tapers no dings or anything of that nature because that would then offset these hubs and rotors so that it wouldn't be true when we are done with them. Uh, along with that, you have two different types of springs that's available with this depending on what you're setting up. This was a nice cone one here then that was literally set inside of one of our floating hub adapters or so on. So that works gently like that. The smaller one might fall into the center, so you'll just have to be selective on these springs here. The springs are going to be the device that goes against this centering device. And uh, that one don't go down over the shoulder. If I grab this one, it goes very nicely down over top the shoulder of that. This spring is going to push this centering device into the taper to then keep it from going up or down or radially out around on that there then. Now we get into the hubless adapters and so on like that. You can see we have two cast iron ones. They are of different diameters and of course we're going to select the one that has about the same bolt pattern as our rim or our brake rotor does. So that's simply asking this unit, setting them inside, and I'm well below the bolt holes. That's 
not good. The pressure's going to be applied where the torque is bolted. So I'm going to try the larger one, and with that, I'm right on the bolt holes on that. So that would work very, very well. If you had a rim of a different size or a hub that was a little bit bigger, you could get into these bigger aluminum hub or floating hub adapters. You can see the diameter of that. But in this case, if I try to use it, I'm not on the flange area. I'm up on the shoulder up there. So that's a definite no-no at this point. So we've selected then the taper, the spring, and then a hubless adapter, which is this one right there. Then. Along with these two aluminum ones, and it's always a great idea to have them of about the same diameter, one on the inside of the rotor and one on the outside of the rotor, and then you're pinching steel itself. If I was to use a small one along with this, what could happen is by the pushing in of this, I could literally flex and distort that flange plate on that, which will put a warp into that rotor. That's the reason why we use torque wrench on all of our lug nuts and so on, so that we don't distort this flange, because that will then run on up into the rotor itself. So again, it's nice to have these of the same diameter if you can. Now these ones are a floating style. They have a hole bigger than the one inch arbor that we had. That could be offset even if we had to it a little bit, if something was protruding in there. But we don't necessarily have to allow it loose on the shaft. We do have a spacer, a step one, that literally does go into our hub just like this. Now the other day I took and remachined the back of this. I remachined all of these fingers on this so that they are square with each other so that there's no taper into these units there then. To do that, I started with this plate, put it on the arbor, slid this in, making sure it gets the shoulder so the hub adapter squares itself off of this level here against this step here, and then this plate centers itself here off of the arbor itself there. With that, when I went to true this up, I did put some witness marks on this. Right now, they're simple as paint. I'll put a couple of center punch marks on that because if I rotate this, it is possible that this would tilt another angle. So you always want to look for some witness marks in it, and it's telling the delicacy of these here on how soft they are. These are aluminum, and if we scratch this around inside of our rotor a lot, we can actually wear these aluminum tabs off very easily, and they might need trued up or so on there. And with that, we have an assembly that looks just like this, sandwiching our rotor in between, along with a center device, and hence the spring will collapse, allowing the two devices to go down on each other themselves there then on it. Okay. So with that, you see those surfaces and talking about the importance of what they touch. As in again, this needs to go right on this flange on the inside. It's not beat up or dented up or so on like that. Of course, I went through, glass beaded the inside of it then so that I have a true surface whenever I go back onto the hub. All right, let's prep our brake blade now for the installation of using these adapters such as this, centering device, and our hub adapter just like this.